Hello guys and welcome to a new Still Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have you UI UI versus Corbo in round one of the first North American tournament. Today we are going to be seeing Comment Le Avant and on the Allied side we have the first SSB under command of UI UI. And on the Axis side, Corbo is going to be bringing out the third Fallschirmjäger. And, well, that's certainly something to point out early on. Corbo is well known for one thing, and that is playing the third Fallschirmjäger very, very well. So, I think we're in for a show, once again, as to how to use the third Fallschirmjäger. He has a couple of strategies up his sleeve. Um, sometimes he focuses on L6s and trying to break through with those early on. However, up against the first SSB that is less likely to work due to M4s in the early game. Um, so it looks like he may go for the more ambush style strategy where you bring in things like Puptions and Panzerfaust and Panzer Shreks and like the Fulsion Panzer Abwehr, all that kind of stuff. And then you have uh, quite a lot of AA, or not AA, um, Air Force, sorry. So the ME109 G6R6 early on, maybe a HS129 in phase A. Over on the side of UI UI, he is going to be actually bringing in a Morris LRC early on. Got the Centaur 4 in there, but the SSB are very strong in the early game. They do have four M4s at their disposal, plus these Centaurs, which makes them a very big force to be reckoned with in the early game for sure. Looks like UI UI also investing in a double Bofors start which could definitely affect Corbo because it seems as though Corbo has gone light on the ground. He has definitely invested in his air force since there's only two Falsham Jaegers on the bottom side a Falsham Panzer Abwehr on the top side unless that's Falsham Spear Troop. He's got a Pack 41 up there and he's got one Falsham Jaeger for that town. In the centre, he's just going to be holding the line with the Kubel MG. So an interesting start from Corbo for sure. But with double Bofors on the field, I'm not entirely sure that Corbo is going to be able to do too much if he wants to use um, his air force early. So he's going to have to bring in yeah, some artillery. And that's going to be in the form of the 210mm off map in this case. And if he can get that on mark on top of these Bofors, then he's going to be in a very good position moving forwards to enable his air force once again. In the meantime, however, UI UI is going to start pushing up with his Morris LRC. He's finding a salient, so he is going to be fast moving into that. Centaur waiting to see what it spots. But uh, Corbo just keeping his units hidden. The majority of them are on return fire. And since that he has them in low availability, he doesn't really want to reveal himself. As, for example, if this Volshimega revealed itself, it would get hit by the Centaur. If this one revealed itself, it would get hit by the Commando 6 and the Commando Fusilier Marines from the forest. Also, the Bofors can get involved at this sort of range, so there's that to worry about as well. A Corbo seeding a plus one early on is going to be bringing in a Pack 41 to try and kill this Morris LRC in the mid early, but that could very well be countered by the um, Centaur here if it's in the right place. But 210mm off map has arrived. Did UI UI see that coming? I don't think he did. So Corbo's just predicting the movement there of the Bofors since he saw it moving forwards and is going to be trying to off map that Bofors, get it out of the way so that his air force that he's definitely spent some points on can come out to play. Pack 41 Gerlich in the meantime is going to take out the Morris LRC in the mid. Wildcat coming in with the two 5 HE power bombs. That's going to possibly kill the Kubel MG but not quite. ME109 G6R6 really can't do much in the face of the double Bofors until this off map hits. But did manage to force the Wildcat back in the process. So that's nice. He's going to hope this off map hits the mark though. Currently all of the shells going around the Bofors but not on them. And that is not ideal. Down to one health. Not entirely sure he's going to be able to uh, do much. 
because this will recover regardless and the fact that it's on one health is probably just very very annoying for Corbo right now because he can't really kill it too easy he's going to have to rely on maybe a mortar or something early or oh, just maybe getting an L6 to come in and try and pop it at close range but meanwhile on this bottom side Commando Fusilier Marines, they are going to pin and probably surrender. Yeah, the Fulshie Makers at close range. So the Commando Fusilier Marines, they're doing a fantastic job with their 11 HE at close range. Commando 6 Squad also pinning down this Fulshie Jaeger may allow the surrender of those to the Commando Assaults. Meanwhile, in the town here, again, Commando 6 Fusilier Marines cutting through Fulshie Jaegers. Corbo seems to be losing his grasp on this game very quickly indeed. However, like I mentioned, as soon as these Bofors do go down, the Air Force will come into play. And Corbo is very good at managing his Air Force. The only person I've seen, Cor uh, seen beat Corbo um, with the Air Micro is uh, Eugen, really. But as you can see, with the Bofors being pinned down there, double ME109 gonna be coming in for the strafing run onto the other Bofors. That is not an attack move, and the ME109s do the job. So. These two ME109s, they've got a lot of work to do. They've got to find the strafing run targets. And once they do, that uh, will allow the L6s and also the Fulshimiegers to do a lot of damage. Here we can see the Commando 6s coming under a lot of fire. Takes them down to three men as they try and chase the Fulshimiegers here. Fulshimpanzer Abwehr further up. They have been found. They took a shot at the Commando Leader's Jeep. Commando leaders hopped out and the Fulsham Jaegers got destroyed. Fusilier Marines now onto the Pack 41 Gerlich up here. A lot of forces being lost on the ground, but uh, this Bofors. Oh, there we go. First shot from the 210mm does the job. And now you have two ME109 G6R6s versus a, Spit, uh, a Seafire sorry, L3 and a Wildcat, which has just been blown out the sky. And these Seafires. They are relatively fast, but it won't matter. It gets taken down very, very easily indeed. They are fragile aircraft, and the job is done for Corbo. Gains that air dominance early on. That's exactly what his game plan was. Now he's got to try and make his way back. Fulsham Jaegers did finish off the Commando 6 squad. Usually Marines are going to come under fire. Fulsham Jaegers is going to be looking for that engagement, especially with the accompaniment of the new ones here and these have the perfect range oh those Fusilier Marines are in a tough position right now they're going to get ruined by that Fulsham Jaeger squad perfect range engagement for Corbo so it's currently a plus two for UI UI kind of been gifted quite a lot of ground early on we have two Centaur fours on the field I'm surprised they're in the positions that they are though in my opinion, what uh, UI UI needs is recon and a lot more of it so that he can start to spot Corbo's infantry units and also just these vehicles in general like Kubel MGs so that the Centaurs can just take those out nice and easy. The other thing I'd like to see is an M4 because M4s straight up counter L6s. Either way, Kubel MG going to be coming in here to surrender the Commando Fusilier Marines. They're also going to be probably discovering the Commando Assaults if they get too close to those. Might be a good idea if the L6 is in line of sight, but until then, probably want to keep that Kubel MG back. Uh, Kubel MG actually, I think, is going to fast move to this bottom side, try and explore a little salient down here. But with the Centaur on the move, that will find line of sight, and that will most likely be a dead Kubel MG very shortly. On the top side, the L6, that's going to be taking on the infantry up here. The two Morris LRCs, they are two-star veterans, see? So they have the potential to do quite a lot of damage to armor at very close range. But that's exactly it. They need to be very, very close for that to matter. Max range, the L6 can pretty much shrug off those Morris LRCs. Number Mark III is going to be the same, same deal. L6 will beat them at range. Just because the armor value of like the three front armor and the three AP is just outmatched by the five AP and four armor, which isn't something you'd say very often. 
But in this case, due to UIUI's reliance on these light armored vehicles, the L6s do actually come out on top. Now another Kubel was taken out in the mid by the Centaur. One thing I guess these can do is do morale damage to the L6 very quickly. And it looks like Corbo is actually being forced to fall back because of that. Uh, which is certainly interesting. And with the Kroon being knocked out there, these Morris LRCs I think have the potential to get some significant kills. ME109 is going to be coming into cover however and due to their limited armor the Morris LRCs are going to take quite a lot of suppression from that. But UI UI has invested in two more Bofors and those are going to be required to hold this air force at bay especially moving into phase B where Corbo will be purchasing himself a HS129. Now this Volshimeg is getting a very nice engagement here with the Commando Fusilier Marines, perfect range. Can get all of its guns on target as long as it has line of sight. Just lost it there. ME109s though, still getting their strafing runs off. This uh, off map has used up all of its ammunition. Porsche Jaegers, they're going to be pushing towards the mid. Looks like they found a little bit of ground there. Staghound AA is now going to this top side, and here comes that HS129 I was on about. Kills off the Morris LRC, takes out the Humber. Now Corbo is going to be looking to kill off this Bofors, but has to find a way to basically do that, and currently doesn't have a way to do so. He can try and pin it with these ME109s, but they aren't going to be the most efficient at killing the anti-air, since... Aircraft get a debuff on damage when it comes to affecting AA. So regardless of suppression, they're not just they're not just not going to do too much damage, so it's not an ideal way to really take care of them. An L6, however, that no longer has to deal with two Morris LRCs and a Humber, is perfect for taking out a Bofors, and that's exactly what Corbo does. So it's still a plus one for UI UI. He's got himself 780 points. But I feel like Corbo has his game plan sorted. Even after making quite a lot of sacrifices early game, he lost his uh, Falschimjägers pretty easily on the bottom side and on the top side, honestly. I think it was about three Falschimjäger units did get uh, taken out quite quickly. And against the infantry that the SSB has, it's no surprise. But it's still something that I think Corbo maybe could have avoided. It really depends because I don't think he counted on UI UI bringing in two Bofors in the early game. That was quite considerable. But these Volshimiegas, they are going to come under fire from the Centaur. Surrendered by the Commando Assaults. Great job by UI UI. He's actually maintaining his territory lead and as long as he does so... The victory shall be his. But where's the recon for the mid? He's relying so heavily on these Morris LRCs. But more for a combat role than a recon role. And not having any dedicated infantry recon. I think is definitely hampering the use of these Centaur 4s. Which have the potential to do so much damage. Nice kill there though for Corbo does manage to use the Panzerfaust to kill off a unit before it unloads. But now the Commander of Royal Marines there with the Stoughthound AA, they're both going to be able to stay on target with the Falschimjägers to the point where they get pinned down and the Stoughthound can quite simply run them down. Unless they just straight up kill them because that is not a place you really want to be as a Falschimjäger right now. In the end he dies. Poor chap. Panzer L6, that's going to absolutely ruin the infantry squad on this top side. Now there's a second L6 here. The Morris LRC really can't do too much. And that is enabling the L6s to become quite aggressive versus UI UI's infantry. Olshimjeg is going down on the top side though. Commando leader and Commando Fusilier Marines making short work of those at close range. The Olshimjegers do suffer at the 100 meter range versus specialized units like these commando assaults for example that's 18 he 
with a 20 HE power grenade. Oshmilia is just melt in the face of those 100 meters. This Panzer L6 though, having nothing of these Fusilier Marines trying to pin the Oshmilia's in the open. Well, they're going to be dealt with swiftly. And all Corby really needs to wipe out the units up here is just a Fulgian Pioneer, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him bring in another just to clear out those trees. But a plus two is on the board currently for UI UI. Sitting in a very nice position, but the Pack 41 getting up to the face of the Centaur is not ideal. Pack 41 has plenty of shots on target. It's got two star veterancy. Can it get a third shot off and find the kill? No, it can't. Centaur does the job. Really nice job there by UI UI. Just cleaning up that AT gun. Easy kill. HS129 did come in for the attack, but I think lost line of sight after the AT gun went down since uh, Corbo is also lacking um, some infantry for this uh, top side and mid. He does have it there. Like he's got the Alf Claras, but they are just a little bit far back at the moment. So they aren't really spotting the stuff that he needs to in order to use his HS129s effectively. However, I guess with the advancement of these L6s, it's not going to be long until he does find a target uh, due to things like the Sherman 5 going to be moving into line of sight to attack those L6s. Looks like the SBW AB41 here got a brief line of sight onto the Commando Fusilier Marines. This HS129 came in for the attack, I think, onto the Morris LRC or even the Sherman 5, but just got forced back by the Staghound AA instead. No kill there just yet. Here we go. SBW AB41 finding and shooting at the Commando Fusilier Marines. That's the beauty of having these vehicles with high optics. They can spot those infantry in the tree lines where other vehicles usually would not. Hoshimig is on the bottom side, still in a pretty bad spot. On this top side, however, L6 does find the kill. Onto the Morris LRC, and these L6s are putting a lot of pressure onto the Royal Marines. The Sherman 5 really needs to do something. I have actually been quite surprised about how reserved UIUI played, and the fact that he's not relying more on things like these Sherman 5s, and also the M4s early on. It looks like he built his division around having um, Sherman 5s in Phase B, because you do get like the, the more availability, I believe. But having M4s in phase A is a huge advantage to have. And against a lot of Axis divisions, you can take advantage of that fully. Now on this bottom side, the Centaur Fort is going to come under fire from the Pack 41 Gerlich. The Gerlich could probably easily score kills onto the Staghound AA. So that might be a better target for Corbo down here since it would enable his air force. But the Centaur there just going to be bouncing those shots. Does get a shot into the Pack 41 which is going to start retreating. German 5 that's trying to take out an L6 on the top side. But Corbo's now brought it back to 50-50. UI has lost his conquest lead for the time being. That's not to say there isn't a potential that he can find it again. Because he does have the Sherman 5 up here. And that can break through the L6s and the SBW AB41. But Corbo has something to say about that. HS129B1 on the way. Going to be hitting one of the Humber Mark 3s. Can it kill the second? Guess the driver wounded. Not quite what he was looking for there. Would have preferred a kill. But either way is going to allow the SBW uh, AB41 to come in aggressively. Fulsion Pioneers do try and use a grenade on the Staghound AA actually. Oh, look at this. L6 comes around the corner, gets a track world destroyed onto the uh, Morris LRC there. There goes both the Humber and the Morris LRC. Fulsion Pioneers, however, do find themselves pinned. Oh, this is lovely work here from Corbo. He uses HS129B1 to absolutely bait the crap out of that AA. Because naturally, AA does focus attack aircraft. But since this, uh, this first HS129 had used up all its ammunition, Corbo used it to take AA fire, whilst the second one, with the extra veterancy and the extra shots, came around uh, for its run. So really fantastic job there, and well, that L6 gets killed on the top side by the Royal Marines, but this SBW AB41 is certainly going ham, looking for the surrender onto the Sherman 5. Unfortunately for Corbo, the HS129 does not find the kill into the side armour. 
but there's an SBW AB41. If it manages to capture that Sherman 5, it would be fantastic for Corbo. It's not going to, I don't think, because it's fallen behind enemy lines. So now a 51% territory lead for UI UI. Corbo have a very much in control of the air. Has forced back the Staghound AA on this top side. Can now focus even more on HS129s. <laughs> Look at this SBW AB41. Absolutely incredible. Just driving on through. It's going to come all the way down to the mid or even the bottom side. Maybe looking for the kill onto the Bofors here would be quite nice. Um, also the kills onto the Staghound AAs. It might get forced to surrender though by the Centaur. That could be something that happens. But it looks like Corbo here just testing those defences. Does actually pin the Bofors. And now the SBW AB41 going to be able to get the shots off. If it can stay on target for a little while longer, that will make Corbo's job a lot easier. So a nice kill there for the SBW. And since those are only 65 points, that actually leaves Corbo in a very good position because um, both of us are 80 points a pop. So although UI UI is going to clean that up, the SBW did its job, killing even more AA and allowing Corbo to follow his strategy, which from the start has been cleaning up AA so that he can strafe with Air Force. And it's something that hasn't really worked out in the early game in terms of conquest points. But he's found himself a nice amount of kills now. He just needs to kind of break through. And he has the tools to do so. He, I think he could take advantage of his Falshin Pioneers to push through the Commando Assaults. But UI UI has a really good defense set up here. With these Commando Assaults, they can obviously beat Falshin Pioneers due to their HE Power Grenade and their standard HE values. Like 18 HE and submachine guns is nothing to discount. UI UI certainly in a decent position still with the conquest lead. And um, I think it's his game to lose for the most part. I'm just very surprised that there hasn't been more focus on the Sherman 5s. And just AP value units in general. That can kill off these SBW AB41s and Panzer L6s. And just completely overrun things like Falsham Jaegers and Pioneers from a distance with the help of Recon. Either way, Centaur is going to be engaging on this bottom side. Falsham Jaegers being hit from a distance, taking a lot of damage. Commando so uh, supports are in the face of Gubal MG, Stug 3, SBW AB41. That's not a place they want to be and they are going to get the hell out of Dodge. More reinforcement, re reinforcing infantry is on the way to these forests now. You can see the pioneers, Fulgian pioneers coming in to kill the assault, commando assaults. Whether or not Corbo will micro, micro this better, uh, we'll have to wait and see. UI UI might do a fantastic job here. If he manages to throw the grenade, then retreat himself. He won't take as much damage, can keep his commando assault squads alive. But so far, Staghound AA does go down. Commander Royal Marines are going to find themselves surrendered. HS129's coming in for the kill onto the Centaur and does find it. UI UI has invested in more Bofors, certainly knowing to counter the third Falsham Jaeger's air, but Corbin doing all in his power to get rid of it. And with a lack of units on this bottom side, well, this Stug's just going to break through and kill these Bofors off since there is no more AP value units here. And a nice job by the Fortune Pioneers. It uh, looks like they're going to engage the Commando Assaults here and then probably back off to avoid taking the grenade in the face. Bottom side though, UI UI wins out with his grenade going off in the face of those Fortune Pioneers. But it's not going to matter since this bottom side forest has been completely surrounded. SBW AB41 is going to take out that Bofors that has just arrived. And if it doesn't, then the Stug probably will. Now we have another HS129 heading to the mid. That's looking for the kill onto the Humber Mark III and the Centaur IV. Raw Marines versus Pioneers. Pioneers are going to get the better of the Raw Marines and surrender them. 
and lovely kills there for the HS129. Takes out both the Centaur 4 and the Humber Mark 3. Things are very swiftly falling in favour of Corbo. HS129 comes in on the top side. Another airstrike. Not going to work out this time around. We can see the Bofors falling on this bottom side and UI's lead is slowly falling away from him. He had such a good early game that allowed him to put on so much pressure to Corbo. But I can't help but question his unit composition. The Humber Mark III's and the Morris LRC's are not the most potent pushing combination. Even just having one card of the two M4's I think is necessary for the SSB in Phase A. And Centaur 4 trying to make this Stug 3 fall back. Wolverine is a good choice actually for taking on Stug 3's. Because it does have the 1200 meter range. And the Stug 3's of course stuck at their 1000 meter range. Aegis 129 though coming in again for this strike on the top side. Can it find the kill? It can. Looks like the last shot there that it fired did the job. Straight through the front armour of that Sherman. That's going to allow these Volschmiegers to engage the commando supports and Royal Marines nicely. But the Wolverine here, fantastic job by UI UI, has managed to take out the Stug 3 with the Wolverine. Now he's going to be moving on, trying to find himself some ground. Trying to stop this plus two that Corbo is currently sitting on. In actually a pretty good position. He has the two Wolverines on the field. And moving forwards in this game, Corbo is going to have to continue to rely on his Air Force. And as long as the AA keeps coming in from UI UI, which it has been so far, then maybe at some point with the units falling back from Corbo in the air. He can bring in his own air force once again to try and contest that. And that would basically disable all of what Corbo's really been doing and the reason that he's been finding the ground. So just support vehicles for these infantry engagements would be ideal on the top side here. Even sending Wolverine up here so that it can take out the R6 and the SPW would be nice. But at the moment I'm just seeing a just general lack of recon. There is the recce down on this bottom side. But most of the recce that he's brought in has just died. Especially the ones that have been brought in in the Humber Mark 3s, Because all of his recon was used in a combat role, pretty much. And it's not ideal because it kind of leaves him blind once those units go down. And that's kind of exactly what's happened. And now we have the triple ME109 train coming in again. That's going to pin the Bofors so that the HS129 is enabled on this bottom side. UI UI is going to take the engagement in the air with the C fires. HS129 fails to kill off the Centaur. Four does get the track wheel damage though. It's going to be two versus two back here. But an 88 is on the field for Corbo. And he's going to be looking... Uh, to pin down some of these C fires in the air. The C fire though, oh, on the wrong end of those ME109s, and that is not good. Now it's a 3v1. Can't help but feel that this C fire is in a bit of a sicky spot, especially with this Bofors, of course, being pinned down here. 88 has been brought in, takes out the Wolverine. UI UI has had enough, and after 27 minutes and 34 seconds, Corbo is going to be victorious with his third Falschemirga. Fantastic stuff from him. Moving into phase C, the 145 points per minute. Definitely something that Corbo took full advantage of there in order to get those 88s in. Secure that air engagement. Take out the rest of those Bofors. Yeah. This is why Corbo is known for his third Volschmiega. Regardless of the fact that he gave a UI UI a plus two early on, still managed to make it work. The, the key was really that as soon as Corbo saw both of those Bofors, he replied with the 210mm off map. He knew exactly what he wanted to do from the get-go. Whereas UI UI, I think, again, I was, I was kind of let down by his unit composition. The fact that he wasn't more aggressive with the Centaur 4s 
though Centaur 4s can easily pin down things like L6s and the SPW AB41s um, from a distance. And that's something you can take advantage of to allow your infantry to win those engagements where the L6s were pinning them down and taking them out. Um, he did do it well in the early game. You know, the Centaurs did pin down a lot of the Falsham Jaegers. But for some reason, he was scared to advance past the 50-50 with a lot of his armor. And the armor he did push past was just inadequate. You can't really rely on Morris LRCs as combat vehicles. It doesn't really work. The best bet for a Morris LRC is either to run down like pinned units or just kill off half tracks like units that can't really fight back. And that's one thing that the Morris LRC is good for. But in this case, putting Morris LRC is right in the face of L6s, not the best decision I've ever seen. Um, so not many kills in the end. Like early on, yeah, Falsham Jaegers went down. Falsham Panzer Abwehr and Pack 41 was taken out on the top side quite easily. Um, UI UI found himself a very, very good position early. Taking out those Kubel MGs was great. But then, as soon as those Bofors went down... Corbo took full advantage. His ME109s coming out to play. HS129s finding kills onto the Morris LRC Mark, Humber Mark III and the Sherman V there. This L6 killed off both the Morris LRCs and the Bofors. SBW AB41. That took out a Sherman. Unless that was just a surrender. But either way, chewing up infantry and AA for that matter. That count AAs went down to the pack 41 Gerlichs. Stug 3 came in again, more AA going down. I think UI UI had the right idea. You know, investing in a lot of AA versus the third Falsham is never a bad thing. But allowing the Bofors to get killed is definitely a bad thing. And I guess against the first off map strikes, there's not really too much you can do about that, especially if you don't see it coming. But in the later game, I feel like there was a severe lack of units that could stop the mobility of Corbo from just running through his lines and finding kills onto both of us. Like, that just shouldn't happen. And that's quite simply because there's no Shermans. Um, something that the SSB can be very strong with in the early phase. So, yeah, that's basically all I have to say about this one. An interesting game nonetheless, and it's always great to see Corbo go to work on his third Fulcrum Jaeger. So congratulations to him. He's going to be moving on to the second round of the first North American tournament. UI UI knocked down to the lower brackets of the last we're going to see of him. But that's all for now, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and uh, I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>